Right, we're going to do the a job for me now. So it's one customer one, one for me, customer one, and we'll get through the backlog. This is a power supply that I bought. It's box 29, it's job 2 of 2. Uh, job 1 was that uh, Colt 295A that I showed you a few days ago. So this is one of the typical Taiwanese power supplies from around 1980 to 81, uh, which worked well but were banned. So this is an interesting one. It's extra interesting. So we've got the, what's this one? The AF branded uh, PP1203G. So this time, we've actually got the terminals, you often get one missing. This time we've got the, I'll just move the viewfinder around, the European type of plug rather than the UK type of plug that I'll be putting on it. So of course these only pick up an earth if they go into the type of socket that swallows the whole plug. In fact it's only on the top isn't it? On the top there. So chances are in the UK this would have been plugged into a shaver adapter and it would never have had an earth ever in its life. So we're going to address that. That's easily done by cutting that off. I've never seen one of those plugs on one of these power supplies. Now that brings us to another thing. The UK and Europe are 230 volts these days, but back then it wasn't. The UK was 240 volts and Europe was 220 volts. And so again on this power supply it says 220 volts. So what happens is things like capacitors will have a working voltage which is too low. We certainly had this with the Bremi power supplies. You put them into service six weeks later, they'd gone bang. Uh, and so we had to put uh, higher capacity. I think it was something like 28 volt rated and it ran on the UK, it ran at 29. So, you know, they, they will be on. So we'll be putting a plug on that. We'll be, that'll be wired in the a single pole switch wired into the neutral, which is not legal. The fuse holder will need changing. It needs to be a type which pulls the fuse out. So when I pull that out, the fuse is supposed to come with it. It did that time, but it's not, it's not captive. Um, and the trouble is, you can, if, it's, if the live is on that ring, you can put your finger on it. And if the live is on the inner one and it does that, you can put your finger on it. So that's what that's the reasons these were banned on safety grounds. Nothing to do with the performance of them because they work absolutely great. And if you saw us, we replicated one of these and promptly been, built 10 of them. The Tango Tone Power Supply. But we used high quality components. Mind you, it cost about 45 quid each to build. Don't think it was a, a cheap project. It wasn't. But at the time, these were sold, selling between 11 and 15 pounds. I like power supplies with transformers in them. So somebody's put some insulating tape around there, which is a half-hearted attempt to, uh, to deal with it. We should have insulation on the transformer primer here. Um, and again on the fuse holder. So we'll look at how it's wired. So the blue wire goes where? So the blue wire which is neutral goes to the fuse holder. This isn't how they're normally wired. I think some attempt has, has been done here to make this a bit safer. And it goes to the ring. And then the neutral wire comes out and goes straight into the transformer. And then the live goes to the switch. A lot of these it's the neutral. So there has been some alteration. And quite, quite correctly it goes there. But the, it needs to go to the fuse holder and then to there. So it does need rewiring. Uh, I'll just take the cobwebs out of it and the dust. I had a friend who bought a second hand power supply and maggots hatched out of it. So then we'll change the capacitors 
and um, then we'll have the daredevilness to try it. So I'm going to start by doing the plug and we'll come back to this. Right, I've got to the stage where we've got the three capacitors out of this. It's got 2200 at 25 volts, so we'll just test that. Uh, have we got an ESR meter on here? Yes, we have. see what that says. There's nothing leaking out of this. Yeah, 2500, when they start reading a bit high, is indicative that they're on the old uh, failure. And 100 microfarads, it's probably absolutely fine, but we're going to change it, it's 40 years old. 158 it's not fine. And the second one of those 160. So they're all they're all on that way. So Mr. Chippy's going to join us and uh, here we go. So now with Mr. Chippy sat in the hot seat we can watch him drop things inside it. And... So when we've done our replica one, we've built ours on the 5 amp version which has got four diodes in it, so it's full wave rectification, whereas the three amp version here has half wave rectif rectification, so it has the two diodes in it. But other than that, it's basically the, the same circuit. In fact, I'll bring one of our boards across and then you can see. So here's one of the boards we made to get more capacitors and more diodes. And it now says TSG on the board. Oh, very nice, Mr. Jibby. So we're doing this at 8 o'clock in the evening instead of tuning the organ because uh, I'm really wanting to, that, that base station took so many sessions with its uh, complex faults and we had to do a test jig that um, I really wanted to get on with the next customer repair and as you know at the moment we've got such a backlog of ones which are actually mine um, that um, we're doing one of my jobs, one of the customer jobs and so on. I know we've got a box of six customer repairs, uh, uh, which I think has got a couple of Comtron 40s in from a gentleman at Sheffield. So, uh, so that means we'll be on box 37 tomorrow. So at the moment, the idea is to take the mains components out. We're going to fit a new fuse holder, which is here, which is the safe type. As I said, the fuse will stay captive in that. Like so. Mm. Okay, so we, Mr. Chippy's now fitted a new fuse holder. There's a big piece of sleeving gone on and it's new wiring for the extra wire we needed for live. We've got the little heat gun, battery operated, the battery is already flat on that so we'll see whether it does anything. It was good for unfreezing the locks on my van the other week when it was freezy. It's not on the right setting is it? <laughs> It's the convenience of having something like this, battery operated and you're not going to do it to strip paint off your windows but just for this kind of job it's fantastic. So the next day we've moved on to having finished the mains wiring. So where were we before? We've done the fuse hold and we put the mm -hmm. sleeving so over, yeah? Put sleeving. So, so the, the neutral goes directly to the transformer now and then we've got the uh, mains switched. 
Yes, it goes to the fuse first. Yes, to the fuse and then to the switch. It's important to note that the mains in is on the top contact and therefore if you would switch it in the down position this bottom contact doesn't become live. Good point. So that's it. Yep, that's it. So we do need to put a mains plug on it and and that and put it together. Mm. Yeah, we'll leave it to that. Right, Mr. Trippy's put it all back together, so we'll do a pat test on it and put a plug on it as you can see. So we'll plug that into wherever it plugs into. And so we will do a this doesn't say it's double insulated, so it is a class one test. So we'll plug that into there. And we need to get to the earth, so pretty Where, simple. Where's the crocodile clip? Oh, well, that's uh, in a pile of stuff. Mm. I shouldn't be holding this really. No. I want to put the lights on. Now, you might have wanted to do this on camera. I might, yeah. So um, let's just see whether we can see that. Great, so that's, uh, I'm sure that was on the camera, so that's that bit done. Now we're going to get another test instrument and we'll see whether the thing works. Yeah. Right, so we'll first start off with checking this actually works and we'll do a bulb test and then we'll get the, uh, the electronic aid, uh, electronic aid, <laughs> the electronic load. DC volts, so will it light up? That's yes. a good start. Because we never know whether it worked a bit, because we weren't going to dare to try it. So offload 13.45, it's not adjustable, no. so that's what you get. Yep. So, so we put off. a 21 watt bulb on, so it's heading towards 2 amps. Just make sure I get the contact so I can use the voltage on the load. I was thinking you could poke them down the holes with yeah. them being stackable. Yeah, kind of. But anyway, so on. Yep, that's yep. It. that's good. So we'll check the voltage now. And so most UK CBs, um, certainly in 1980, were between 1 and 12.95. Excellent, that's fine. Uh, was between 1 and 1.8 amps. It's not like some of the modern sets today that draw nearly 2.5. So right, we'll pause the video again, and this time we'll go and get the electronic load and see what it actually really does. Right there, electronic load, switch it on, um, and let's just set it to one amp to start with. Yeah, like. so can I remember how to do this? Yes, so that, yeah, one amp, switch the unit on. So we've got 13.489, it's coming up a little bit. So with one amp, yep. there we go, 13.13 volts. Yep, so you can inc increase that slowly, can't you? Yep. So it's one and a half. It's supposed to be a three amp power supply. Maximum. Yeah, no, we're not going to take it beyond there except as a surge test in a moment. So two fans come in on the unit. Still holding up at 2 2.6, 2.7, 2.8, 2. Mm. 3. That. So now then I want you to switch it off. I want you now to select 5 amps because it says it does 5 amps surge. And then I want you to switch it on just for like 2 seconds. 1, 2, Stop. No, it won't do that. Now I'll reset that for 4 amps. And again, no. no. Set it for three point five. Okay. Yeah. Really. Yeah, it's about it's three amps, isn't it? I don't yeah. know about yeah, but surge is a load of bull. Yeah. 
do 3.1 maybe. Yeah, okay. <laughs> But I think the great power supplies, they're now 40 years old, they got banned and they just needed that uh, mains wiring. We've done the capacitors and that, so it'll be good for another 40 years. And, and when you look at that, it's had plenty of use. It's not like it was binned because the government said so. And it was safety um, about opening it up and being able to poke things through and that. But uh, with that bit of shielding, it makes all the difference. Uh, in about another uh, 10 videos we've got another power supply it's probably going to have a different make but I really wanted to see how the 220 volt version performed because it, we, they are normally the 240 volts for the UK at the time um, um, so that's absolutely fantastic so thanks for watching the turn it around so we can see its face for a final yep. time um, it's the AF is it? it's PP-1203G AF is the yes. make, yeah. So it's clearly aimed probably at the uh, European market.